If you're wondering how you can finance your studies while studying at ETH Zurich or any other university for that matter, where the living costs are really high, then you've come to the right video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can do this by getting hired directly by ETH or the university where you study as a teaching assistant. If you don't know me, hi, I'm David. I'm a master student of robotics at ETH Zurich. And at this point, I've been a TA for three different courses. So autonomous mobility on demand, uh, programming for robotics and the robotic summer school. In this video, I'll cover what you need to become a teaching assistant, how to actually apply, how you get compensated, and why I think it's something you should definitely consider doing uh, during your studies. Let's get into it. Let's start with the requirements to become a TA at ETH Zurich. So this heavily depends on the course. For some courses, the teachers or the professors teaching the course directly select from their pool of PhD students and select TAs from there. But for most courses, uh, you can apply if you've either taken the course before and preferably have done well in it, or if you can show that you have significant experience or expertise in the topic of the course. So in my case, for the Autonomous Mobility On Demand course, I had taken this course during my minor at ETH. Um, and then when I came back for my master's, I was able to apply and be a TA in my first semester of the master's here. But for the other two courses, Programming for Robotics and the Robotic Summer School, uh, I had actually never taken these courses. So I was able to apply and get a position by showing that I had had enough experience uh, working with robots and the robot operating system through my gap year at Driverless and other projects. So the next question I get asked very often, even by students at ETH, is how do you actually apply to be a TA? And honestly, I totally understand their confusion and their doubts. I had this as well at the start uh, because it's quite an obfuscated process. There's no like um, TA application portal or something like that. Um, what you really have to do is to find uh, the page of the course who is teaching the course and find their email online and just send them a cold email with your experience and your CV and hopefully they get back to you and they'll either forward you to one of their PhDs or they'll have a chat with you directly and that chat can either be uh, an interview um, or they can hire you directly based on that email and just talk about logistics. It really depends on how selective they are. So here again I'll share my personal experience for the Autonomous Mobility On Demand uh, I applied about one month before the course started, which I think is quite a good uh, time. That's usually when they're looking for TAs. Um, and then uh, the professor directly got back to me and scheduled a, a chat. And uh, we had a video call. And in that video call, it was really more of an onboarding process where uh, we started to talk about the logistics of when to start, um, what data I needed to be in Zurich to uh, have proper preparations before the course started, uh, etc. For the Ross course, I also sent an email about a month before the course started to the main professor of the course who then forwarded me to one of his PhDs who was teaching the course and there it was a similar thing where we scheduled a video call and it was more about onboarding and logistics. And actually in that onboarding call was when they offered me a position for the robotic summer school without me even asking for it or thinking about it um, because it's organized by the same lab that teaches the Ross course. The next big question is how much do you actually earn as a TA? So like most salaries in Switzerland, TA salaries at ETH are quite generous. Um, you get paid about 28 francs per hour gross salary, which amounts to about 25 uh, francs per hour, which you actually get in your bank account. So you have to log your own hours, either in a personal spreadsheet or in a system called ETHIS or ETIS, uh, where uh, you have a spreadsheet built in and you simply put how many hours you've worked each day and at the end of the month you export a PDF which gets signed by yourself and your supervisor and then gets uh, sent to HR so that they can uh, transfer the, the money to your account. Um, I have worked with both of these systems, so a personal spreadsheet where I send uh, the total number of hours in the month to the professor and then they handle the rest or where you use this other system. Keep in mind that during the semester you're legally only allowed to work part-time so that's about uh, 60 hours per month um, which means that if you go over that amount on a certain month because you, you work a lot or something like that uh, you usually have to move those hours to the next month um, to uh, make it work from a legal perspective. Uh, and in the months of the summer, uh, you have no limit, I think, or you can work full-time, so more than the 60 hours a month. Now, why would I recommend being a TA? As a three-time TA, you might think I'm a bit biased, and it's true. 
but I still want to provide some objective reasons why I think being a teaching assistant is great. The first is that teaching reinforces your own learning. So many times you're simply going over the exercises and the materials before the students are and you're digesting all of that information, understanding it, and then you're able to explain it to students. And that really, that process of explaining it to someone really solidifies your own understanding. And every time a student comes uh, to you with a problem or an issue they're having, it's basically, you can see this as an exercise for yourself. And solving that exercise not only provides you uh, with satisfaction, but it also helps a student. So it's, it's really great. The second reason is that you build connections. So first of all, you meet a lot of students through the course that you're able to interact with and help. Um, you also become friends with the other teaching assistants that are helping out in the course uh, and you directly interact with PhDs or professors that are teaching the course. So to drive this point home, I'll share some of my personal experience. In the Autonomous Mobility On Demand course, which uh, I taught in the first semester of my master's, everything was remote, which meant that my interaction with students was only through Zoom. Uh, and this obviously was an ideal, but even then, um, after teaching the course, it's happened several times already that I'm walking through campus or that I meet someone new and they say, oh, hey, weren't you the uh, TA for, for the Autonomous Mobility On Demand course? And that's like uh, a great spark to start a conversation and to, uh, you know, get to know someone better. As a TA for the two week Ross course, which just finished, um, I was able to actually interact with the students physically uh, and in person, which was absolutely great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, and I loved it because um, during the grading of the exercises or helping students do the exercises, I would just go and sit next to the student and ask them about the issue they were having and hopefully solve that issue. And then after that, ask them some casual questions about you know, what they were studying, um, how far they were into their studies and you know, what kind of projects they were working on or, hey, have you done your internship? Yeah, where, where did you do it? Oh, cool, I did it here. Um, you work at AMZ, oh, cool, can I get the, the contact of this person so that I can do this or yeah it was just a really great way of uh, meeting new people and uh, and building new connections. Now for the robotic summer school I'm really excited uh, that we'll be able to spend you know a whole week 24-7 uh, with the all the students of the program which are coming from all over the world so there's like 30 students from ETH and the rest are literally from any university in the world. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that because then you really are interacting with uh, these students on, uh, you know, at all times of the day, you're having meals with them. And uh, I think that's a, that's a really nice environment to, to make some new friends and meet uh, some really interesting people. Some of the people applying to this robotic summer school are actually uh, subscribers of the channel and have reached out to me. So I'm especially looking forward to uh, meeting you guys uh, if you get through the application process, which I hope you do. So as I mentioned before, aside from interacting with students, you get to interact with the people actually teaching and lecturing the course. So that's either PhDs or professors. And that really gives you a good sense of how the lab functions because each course really belongs to uh, a certain lab. Um, and that gives you really great pointers and connections uh, for when it comes time to um, look for a semester project or a master thesis, you can reach out to those people or you can, you know, uh, if you have a bad experience or you think, oh, this lab is not organized, then, you know, that information is also useful. Now, the third reason I would recommend being a TA is because of freedom. And I know freedom sounds very vague. So here I mean freedom in three facets. The first one is freedom of when you work. So most of the work you have to do in uh, certain TA ships um, is something that you can just do at home. So it's either going through exercises or preparing exercises or something like that. There's obviously gonna be times where you have to be at a tutorial and you have to teach in person. Those times are fixed, but for the rest, you're really flexible to work whenever. So there's also freedom in what you work on. So for courses like Autonomous Mobility On Demand or the Robotic Summer School, there's a very big pool of tasks that need to be done. So either an exercise needs to be made or something needs to be fixed in the software pipeline so that the software works for the students using it. And the TAs have to decide within themselves uh, who does what. And that can really be a conversation based on the interests of everyone. Finally, there's also the intangible benefit of the freedom that comes from being staff at ETH. And I'll give a few examples so that it's a bit clearer. So for the Autonomous Mobility On Demand course, uh, for instance, I was added to the uh, Slack group of the whole um, Professor Frazzoli lab. 
And this gave me really quick access to be able to contact certain people in the lab, like certain PhDs. Uh, and it also meant that I was up to date with any events going on at the lab. And it was through this network and this channel of communication that I was able to join on one of their test days where I was driven around by an autonomous go-kart. And that was really a super cool experience that I would have missed otherwise. Similarly, as a TA for the Robotics Summer School, I'm officially staff member of the Robotics Systems Lab at ETH, which also organizes the Robotics Innovation Day uh, later this summer. And this is like a huge event. And to me, it's super cool that I uh, have the opportunity to help in the organization and participate in this event for free, uh, where there's you know many industry members and a lot of cool presentations of ongoing research. Uh, and yeah, a very unique experience. So if all the previous reasons are not enough, then the final reason is that you're actually getting paid for all of this and quite generously actually. So you're telling me that I can spend the whole day working on the Super Megabot, which is part of the Robotics Summer School, and not only walk away with new skills, but also with a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. I mean, that to me seems like an amazing deal and it shouldn't surprise you what I, why I've been a TA for three times already. All right, so I hope this video has made it clear what you need to become a TA at ETH, how to actually apply, how you're compensated, and some of the reasons why I would recommend that you consider doing a TA during your studies here. If you're interested in financing your studies through other means, such as applying for the Excellence Scholarship, check my playlist on the topic here. All right, with that said, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.